Hi, welcome back. Let's continue with our cloud journey. In the last episode, we learned about worker roles, and we configured our worker role to directly take workloads either from internet using input endpoint, or from the web role within the same cloud service using internal endpoint. In this episode, we will introduce a different, loosely coupled way of communicating workloads by using Windows Azure Service Bus queues. Windows Azure Service Bus is one of the application services provided by Windows Azure. It provides a hosted, secure, and widely available infrastructure for widespread communication, large-scale event distribution, naming, and publishing. It provides relayed messaging through relay endpoints. It provides brokered messaging through queues, topics, and subscriptions. And it provides notification hubs that can push notifications to a large number of mobile devices. Since this is not a class about service bus, I won't go into further details here. For interested viewers, you can follow this link on the screen to windowsazure.com to learn more about Service Bus. In this episode, we'll use a Service Bus queue to send jobs from our web role to our worker role. Instead of continuing with our Hello World project, let's start with a new project this time. Here, I'm going to create a new SPNet website. Please note this is not a cloud project. This is just a regular SPNet application. Now I've got my SPNet application created. I'm doing this because I want to show you another way of creating a Windows Azure Cloud Service project. Let's say you have an existing SPNet website, like this one I've just created, and you want to migrate it to Windows Azure Cloud Service. How do you do this? You can simply click on the project and select Add Windows Azure Cloud Service Project. This operation adds a new cloud service project into your solution and converts your existing SPNet website as a web role of this cloud project. As you can see here, this is my web application, and this is newly added a cloud service project, and my web application is added as a web role of this cloud project. And the other way to add an existing SPNet application as a web role is to right click on the roles and say add. And if you have other um, web role projects in the same solution, um, this menu will light up and you, you will be able to add the project as a web role into your cloud service project. Now let's add our worker role who will use service bus queue to get jobs. To do this, I will right click on roles, add, new worker role project. And I will pick from the worker role with service bus queue template and say add. And you can see my new worker role project is added to the solution. This template provides us all the necessary code and the configurations for us to talk to a service bus queue. Uh, let's see how that works. First, let me open up the configuration of the worker role. The template adds a new settings to your worker role. And this connection string points to a service bus queue. And you can see there are placeholders for your namespace and your secret. And here I have to pause and introduce some of the basic concepts of service bus. Before you can provision queues and the topics in service bus, you need to create a namespace. Just consider a namespace is the scope of your service bus entities. After you have the namespace, you can add queues and topics into that namespace. And for each namespace, you have a user ID 
uh, which is by default owner, and uh, secret, which is used for you to establish connection to your service bus entities. Here, we are going for the basic case by using the default owner ID and the default secret key. Of course, you can give much fine-tuned security over your entities, but that's out of the scope of this episode. Now, let's provision a new service bus namespace as well as a queue for our purpose. I've logged on to Windows Azure Management Portal here. To create a new service bus namespace, I will click New, App Services, Service Bus Queue, Quick Create. I will give a queue name, IG Jobs. I will pick a data center, let's say West US. Use my subscription. And you can see the wizard here creates the namespace as well. Uh, logically, you should have the namespace first, then you add queues and topics into the namespace. The wizard here is really nice. It combines two operations into one step. So here I'm going to say create a new queue. This will take just a moment. Now my namespace and my queue is ready to use. My namespace name is HaiShiJobs-NS. And if I click on it, I'll go to queues tab, and you can see my queue is created and is ready for use. Now I will click on access key and I will copy the connection string. This is the connection string I need to enter into my project so I can connect to this queue. I will copy. And paste here. Say OK. Now our worker role has been configured. Let's see how the code looks like. Let me open the worker role class. And I will change the queue name to match with my queue name, Haishi Jobs. And you can see in my wrong method, I'm looping through to receive message from the service bus queue. And whenever I receive a message, I will print out the sequence number of the message, and then I will mark the message as complete. We'll come back to this complete method later. For now, we are ready to test our worker role. Visual Studio Tooling provides enhanced support for Windows Azure Service Bus. And you can access your Service Bus namespaces and entities through Server Explorer. Let's go to View, Server Explorer. You can see here I have a Windows Azure Service Bus node. I'm already connected to one of my namespaces. To connect to the namespace I just created, I will right-click on the node and say Add New Connection. And I will import my published profile. And you can see the tool reads my subscription and publishes the fields here. And this is the exact namespace I want to connect to, so I'll just say OK. Now I'm connected to the namespace. I can expand to see my queues. And this is the queue I just created. Server Explorer also allows you to send and receive test messages. Let's see how that works. Here, I'm going to launch the application first by pressing F5. And now, both my web role and the worker role are working. Let's bring up the computer emulator UI so we can see the output from the worker role. You can see here, my worker role is running and it's generating some outputs. Let's go back to Visual Studio. Let me lay out the window so you can see both Visual Studio and the Compute Emulator. And I will bring up the Server Explorer again. 
and I'm going to click on the queue and say send a test message. You can see the message is sent and you can see my worker role has got the message and it's processing the message. Similarly, you can also set up a breakpoint in your code. Uh, let's say I set up breakpoint here. And I will send another test message. Message is sent. And of course, my worker role is getting the message and processing the message. And you can see the message appearing on the output window as well. Let me stop my application and maximize the Visual Studio. Now, our worker role is completely ready for jobs. And let's see how do we send the job from the web role. In order to send messages to a service bus queue, I will need a service bus client. And I can acquire that client by installing a NuGet package. I will right click and say manage NuGet packages. I will do a search for service bus. And I will install Windows Azure service bus package. For simplicity, uh, let's modify our home controller and we'll send out a new message to our worker role whenever a user clicks on the about link. Here I will use oversimplified code without proper error handlings, but usually when you work with an external service, you want to handle the transient errors. Transient errors are temporary errors that may be caused by uh, network connectivity, uh, server capacity, and other uh, aspects. And you want your code to be ready to handle those transient errors because they might occur anytime. But for here, I'm skipping all that, but you should be aware of that. To connect to a queue, I need a connection string. And I will paste in the connection string we just used. And my queue name is Hashi Jobs. Now I will create a queue client from the connection string. Resolve this. And to send a message, all I need to do is to create a new brokered message and put my payload as the message body. Here I'm going to say client send new broken message. And here I'm just using a string as my message body. And that's all. Let's see how that works. Let me launch the application. And let me bring up the computer emulator UI again so I can see the output from the worker role. And let me rearrange the window so you can see both the web row and the worker row. Before I click on the about link, let me right click on the computer emulator UI and clear all the logs so we can have a clear view. And then I will click on the about link, which will trigger a message uh, to be sent. The link is clicked. And you can see a message is sent and processed. And I can send additional messages as I like. And you can see uh, the messages are coming through. OK, we've got our scenario working. We've got a web role and a worker role connected by a service bus queue. And we are sending jobs from web role to the worker role through the queue.
Now let's spend a moment to reflect on why such communication pattern is important for your application. On this diagram, I have my web role and the worker role with a service bus queue in between. The web role generates a job. The job is put on the service bus queue, and the job is later on uh, picked up by the worker role. And this is uh, exactly what we've uh, just seen right now. Now let's consider the case that the job is uh, more complex and takes a long time to process. In this case, the web role is generating jobs at a much faster pace than the worker role can handle it. However, because of the queue is serving as a buffer in between, the web role is free to take in more traffic and to remain responsive, while the worker role will handle the long-running jobs in the backend at a slower pace. So this is a case of load leveling where you can use a queue to buffer the incoming requests so you can handle bursts of requests without overloading a system. Now let's consider if I want more system throughput. I can easily scale out my worker role to multiple instances. In this case, the worker role instances are subscribing to the same job queue and essentially they are competing consumers of the same job queue. When web role generates jobs, each worker role instance will have an equal chance to get a job and process it. In this example, a job one goes to worker role one, and job two goes to the second instance. This is another uh, important scenario to increase your system throughput by scaling out your worker roles. And now, um, do you remember the complete method uh, we just saw in our code? Uh, when you get a job from a queue, uh, you can choose to remove the job from the queue directly, or you can choose to place a temporary lock on the item so the job is invisible to other consumers. Once you've placed the lock, you're given a time window in which you're supposed to call the complete method to complete the message. Uh, if your worker role fails to call the complete method uh, within that time window or failed to renew the lock or it simply crashes, um, the lock will expire and the message will reappear on the queue so it can be picked up by other workers. This is yet another important pattern for failover, uh, basically with multiple worker roles and the temporary lock we are guaranteeing a job will be handled at least once among those worker roles. And here I'm just going through uh, some very basic scenarios that Windows Azure Service Bus can enable. Uh, if you want to learn more about Service Bus, uh, I encourage you to go to windowsazure.com or MSDN to read more about Service Bus. And Windows Azure Service Bus is only one of the application services Windows Azure provides. There are many other application services you can pick and choose. Uh, although there are many types of services, soon you will find there's a very consistent way for you to interact with those services. Uh, for management, uh, you can always use Management Portal, uh, Visual Studio Tooling, uh, Management API, or PowerShell command line tools and many other third-party tools. And to consume a message, uh, you can use SDK or to get additional libraries uh, as NuGet packages or to invoke RESTful APIs that are supported by most of the services. So although here we only talked about service bus, uh, you can try to apply the similar uh, way of consuming uh, when you use other services. In summary, uh, today we introduced Service Bus Queue and we talked about several uh, scenarios that it enables, uh, such as load leveling and load balancing, uh, scaling out and failover. And by using Service Bus, we showed you a general pattern how to use Windows Azure application services. In future episodes, uh, we will use more application services as we go. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.